Catherine, Princess of Wales, has been missing for a little while, and now she's showing up again. Greg, wants to tell us about the video we're going to watch. This is her official statement produced by the BBC, and she's telling us what is going on in her life. Quite simply, that. I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge shock, and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. As you can imagine, this has taken time. It has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment. But most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. As I've said to them, I am well and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal in my mind, body and spirits. Having William by my side is a great source of comfort and reassurance too as is the love, support and kindness that has been shown by so many of you. It means so much to us both. We hope that you'll understand that as a family, we now need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. My work has always brought me a deep sense of joy and I look forward to being back when I'm able. But for now, I must focus on making a full recovery. At this time, I'm also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so this is important. It has been shot by the BBC. You can go and get the 4K footage if you want to look at it close up. Important because it isn't the palace that is produce this. Uh, it's it's the BBC. You think what you want of the BBC, but I guess because there was a lot of speculation, conspiracy theory around this, the palace decided to have an outside organisation. Of course, if you want to go down that route, yes, the BBC was once part of MI5 and MI6. So if you want to go down that route, Keep on going and and have a have a enjoy yourselves, uh, but but essentially the idea is that this is um, is is uh, a, a a true footage, and so uh, it's high quality. For example, you can see a fly that goes across the screen. In order for this this to be digitized, that would be really quite hard. You can see the lens flare from the ring. That means that light has to shine off the ring and be dispersed by the lens in the camera. You can hear the jets flying into Heathrow Airport in the background. Now, this is shot in Windsor. You have the daffodils in the background. You have the blossoms. So we know the season in the background is the right season. The daffodils, um, uh, the Queen Mother's, one of the Queen Mother's favourite flowers. When I used to live at uh, at, uh, where's, at the old place of Siegfried Sassoon, the Queen Mother would drive down every Easter around about this time in order to watch and see those, those daffodils. Incredible display of daffodils um, at, uh, at Sassoon there um, on a wooden bench. So it's very much of the people, the daffodil being the symbol of Marie Curie and the Cancer, Cancer Foundation. So the, uh, a Breton shirt being worn as well, a, a shirt of the people for sailors. Uh, so the sailors, could you could see them when they're drowning more easily, apparently. But what we know it to be is indigo along with the jeans. So it's very utilitarian. It's very much, uh, shall we say, the people's princess. They're emulating uh, Diana, her uh, mother, uh, yes, mother-in-law, would have, would have been known to be her mother-in-law, and wearing Diana's ring there. So, look, 
lots of uh, imagery in there about the family and about cancer and about resilience. We're there at at around Easter time and the daffodils uh, blooming, uh, reborn in the spring. Uh, now, what can we say about her? Oh, by the way, here's an interesting one. That ring, by the way, uh, was given to Harry uh, by his mother in her will, and he he gave it to uh, to William in order to give to Kate as her um, her wedding ring. So, actually, quite somewhat magnanimous there from from Harry. Not something you'd expect, but good on him uh, for doing that. Look, there is a baseline here of, of of concern and worry, I would say. I'm sure everybody else will go into that. But the first big break from baseline for me is this downward look and a big breath in uh, and a small vocal click as well around. This, of course, came as a huge shock. I would say that's pretty congruent for a huge shock. Uh, I don't find that out of place. So I see her look for the emotion, contain the emotion, and deliver after that more emotion, contained emotion, around the big uh, shock. What follows after that is a, a lot of self-soothing, especially around the, the, the thumbs. That's what I expect with, an, uh, with honesty around this. And then a baseline break as well, a look down, thinking about those who have been affected themselves uh, by by cancer. Uh, and ultimately, I'll finish on this is the job of a royal family as a, as a to take the president, which is to be a, a, a fairground mirror, albeit sometimes a, uh, you know, a, a wobbly one, but a, but a mirror um, of of all of us, which is all of us have known people who are, who have maybe cancer, but other some kind of life threatening disease. And I guess this speech then becomes a chance for us to think about those people in our lives, not just Kate, but those in our lives and think about them. And so she finishes this speech with the idea of faith and hope and you're not alone. So lots of symbolism in there, some real emotion, I would say in the right places. Uh, for anybody speculating, looks absolutely uh, real and and uh, congruent to me. Uh, Greg, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I'll just take one thing. I'll leave plenty for the rest of you because, Mark, what a beautiful job of tying in. It is impossible to fake all of those things in the background and tying it in, having the fly cross, all, the, all of that, beautiful. But there's one place that is palpable in everything she does, all of that hand adapting, everything else. It takes a new turn when she digs her nails into her arm and she says, I'll be okay at the same time she eye blocks. That's uncertainty. Clearly, she the rest of her message is pretty certain. That's the place I see some anxiety and that kind of thing. When people do that, it's a, it's a change from the rest of their adapters. And I think that one stands out to me the most. Scott, what do you got? All right. Yeah, I agree with you. And I'll talk about this more as, as an entire piece instead of going through the little things and cutting things up. If we look at her from the beginning to the end, we see a lot of changes. If you listen to the very beginning of it, then you scooch back to the end and listen, you hear their voices a lot lower at the end. Obviously, it would be because as you go through these things, you know, you relax some. Like quite often on this show, you'll see me, I'll start off, yeah, what's going on? Then I'm like laid down here, all relaxed and stuff from us goofing around and talking and stuff. But in this one, she does a great job at at remaining really or fairly still. But we do see that movement happen. And the biggest movement is in her shoulder as it comes down from the beginning to the end. Uh, and the difference is there. After that, there's not a whole lot of difference other than her, than her voice uh, being a little bit lower, which would make us think maybe she's she's a little tired. Because she starts off all bubbly, and toward the end, she is talking about things that are really serious. And as she gets more emotional about it, I'm sure that's what's that's causing all those things. So there's uh, no surprise in in where she begins and where she ends, where the, the differences in those two things. Also, the the AI stuff, I agree with Mark. There are a couple little little glitches in there that that will I think Chase is going to talk about in a minute. And but I I don't think it's it's AI either. AI hasn't been able to. Um, you, you've got the two different things. You've got people when they do the, the the deep fakes. I don't think it's a deep fake at all. But when you deal with AI, you deal with a human doing AI, or you you have a, a fake person. So many things are out of whack with that, and your brain sees that, and your brain knows it, and you get that gut feel and say something's not right here. Some of them are really good, and we can argue about this. But everything from the illustrators with those things 
to the way their mouths move, those things that they haven't perfected that yet. They haven't perfected the body language of AI yet. I'm doing a whole video of that over on my channel I've been working on for a while. And I go into those things. So I've, I've been paying it. So telling you that because I've been paying attention to those things and focusing on them. So I don't see any of that going on in here at all. Like I said, there's a couple of little glitches I think that Chase will talk about. But outside of that, I think that's her sitting there talking. And I'll, I'll agree. I'll agree with you guys. The most we're seeing movement wise is in her hands, which is where most people adapt, uses adapters when there's something going on. And her, her blink rate does go up and it does go down. And we do see eye blocking. We see all these things that we're familiar with when someone is stressed. And obviously she's stressed because she's sick. And I don't think she, uh, from what she said, she didn't expect it to show up. So I'm sure it was a shock to her. And she's trying to to get through that. Plus all this stuff in the media, everybody's saying, ah, she's not there. She's, you know, she's dead or she's been kidnapped or whatever has happened to her. So I'm sure that's part of the, the stress for it as well, which has made this really important. So I think with all that on your mind, plus your health situation, that's what's going to make you uh, act this way because she's she's really uh, batting down there. Their legs crossed and her, and her hands together and all that that ringing and, and squeezing and, and adapting with her hands. I think that's a, a, a pretty big deal for her. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, y'all covered quite a bit there. Uh, I, and I think when William and Kate came onto the scene, I think a lot of people were uh, excited uh, to see people who were open and authentic, which is rare for uh, royals. And at least here in the U.S., the royal family is seen as these people who are kind of artificial a little bit, kind of walled off in isolation. And then in the past year, uh, with all the news about just from what I've read, and I'm no expert, like the, there was some faked photo thing, like an AI enhanced or AI faked photo. I think people might have been upset uh, about everything seeing that. And keep in mind, I'm no expert on the royal family. I'm not an AI expert. I won't say something's AI or not because I'm not an expert. Uh, the issues that they're going through, I think I only want to look at this as a behavior profiler. And I'm not sure what to think of this. Uh, there's not a whole lot of emotion, and it's designed to be an emotional reveal. And I get that it's a royal family publication made by them, obviously the BBC. Uh, and maybe some of you who know this stuff way better than we do can add what we're missing down below. We're all open to being wrong here. Uh, there's a lot of pacifying behaviors here, which means we're stressed out. We're trying to comfort ourselves. There's a lot of uncertainty in her body language. So it's not just grieving and and sadness that we're seeing. It's a, t a lot of things that suggest uncertainty. And somehow her left shoulder and her left eyebrow are permanently just locked in this upward position. They do not move. She has a few bumps with her left shoulder, but her left eyebrow is raised and like stuck in position. I thought that was very unusual to see. Uh and I'm obviously sorry to hear about the diagnosis. We're obviously thrilled there's hope and things are looking up and happening to her to keep her healthy for her and for those precious babies of hers. But something about this video felt way off. And I will admit that I can't put my finger on it. I don't know what it is. That's all I got. All right. Well, there you have it. Those are our thoughts on what's going on with Kate and let us know in the comments what you think is happening, and we'll see you next time. So what do you got?